Uh, there's, there's two things actually we've recently announced. I'll do the first one, which is our retention time lock for ransomware. So as you know, uh, everybody's petrified of ransomware right now. The hackers get in, they encrypt the primary storage. They either get a hold of another server on the network to get to the backup storage, or they come right through the backup application and they delete the storage and the backup in the backup. They delete the data in the backup storage. So now you don't have any backup or retention to recover from. The primary data is encrypted, and lo and behold, you have to pay the ransom. Um, as you know, we have the two-tier approach. So we have the front end for the performance tier for fast backups and restores, and then we deduplicate into a second tier, which is the repository. Since we have that repository, we have a non-network facing tier. So that if you go and issue the delete commands, it'll wipe out our landing zone, but not all the retention data on our second tier. We're the only ones that have this sort of layer of, of, of protection. Um, on top of that, we have immutable data objects in that second tier repository. And we allow for what's called delayed deletes. So you could have 20, uh, it's called 12 weeklies, 36 monthly, seven yearlies, and that's still intact in, in the retention tier. But what we'll do is say, hey, for, for 14 days or for 10 days, don't, don't process a delete request. So now what happens? Hackers come in, equip the primary storage. They go in either through another server, the backup search, and they wipe out all of the backups, including our landing zone. We're no different than a data domain or an HP store once or a Veritas appliance or any disk from NetApp, Dell, HP, whatever. We all get wiped out in that case. Except Exagrid has the second tier. All the, rep all the retention data is still there, still full intact, and wasn't deleted because we ignored the delete request for that 10-day period. So now you come panic on a Tuesday. Oh, my God, everything's encrypted. Everything's wiped out. You go in and you just restore from us. In fact, we just had it happen. So this is perfect. I can't say the customer name because obviously it's security. But yesterday, you know, we've upgraded the customer to our 6.0 version that had a ransomware attack, encrypted all the primary storage, wiped out all the backup storage, except they were still able to restore within one day ago of everything in the network and they didn't pay the ransom. So the second thing we've introduced is the new appliances. So what are the new appliances? As you know, uh, processor, memory, uh, RAID cards, everything gets better over time. So periodically, you have to refresh your product line. It allows you to keep your performance up, allows you to keep the cost down so you can continue to ride the price curve for customers, uh, et cetera. And also, the drives get bigger. And as the drives get bigger, if the RAID cards can handle the performance of those bigger drives, which the RAID card we use from Broadcom can, we went to bigger drives, so we're getting a better rack space efficiency in these new appliances. We're putting more capacity in an appliance without, you know, uh, without slowing down the backups. We are uh, getting, therefore, more data in a, in, a, in a certain amount of rack space, and at the same time, we're lowering the costs. Um, if you add on top of that, that uh, we had came up with a, with a new appliance called the EX84. It's now our largest appliance. You can put 32 of those in a scale-out system. That allows you to put 2.7 petabyte full backup in the first tier, plus all the long-term retention in the second tier, all in a single scale-out system. That's 50% bigger than our closest competitor, whether it be Veritas or HP or Dell or whatever. So we now have we have the largest system in, in, in the market before. Now we even have bigger than that largest system in the market than we had before. Um, and so we have that. The other thing we do different than everybody is we don't obsolete models. So what everyone else does is they refresh their model line. Then they either jack up the maintenance and support or they give you an end date as to when you got to stop using it. But what if that quick gear is still good? You don't, you don't want it to end. And why are you getting higher maintenance just because you came out with new models? So what we do, we have a price protection program that says when you buy any model, first of all, you have the same price for that model for five years protected. But your maintenance and support won't go up more than 3% a year. And if we come out with new models and stop selling the current models, you still get maintenance and support. At the same rate you were getting before, not to exceed 3% per year. And since day one, any old model and any new model has always and continues to always work inside the same system. So it's not like people who have a front-end controller and disk shelves, and then they come out with new disk shelves, and it doesn't work with the controller. Or they come out with a new controller, and it doesn't work with the disk shelves. All our new appliances work in the same system, mix and match with our older appliances. In fact, we can have any size appliance or any age appliance work in a single size system, and we've always maintained that. So we've eliminated forced product, forced product obsolescence every time we bring out new models.